Tons of people online as it continues to grow. Welcome to all the countries. Welcome to us for being here. Some places it's 6 a.m., some places it's 3 a.m. And I appreciate all that. So I'm going to make it worth everyone's time, including myself. Make sure I have a candy. Okay. This is a synoptimistic lecture. And uh, tomorrow night is going to be the roundtable lecture. And I've discovered something. Um, I've discovered something that has been a lie. There's a lie that has been going on for a long time growing up. And it has to do with how you influence another human being. Because that's where my research is taking me, okay? I've briefly touched on it here and there. Tomorrow night I'm going to go in depth over it, okay? That's for tomorrow night's plug. For right now, let's talk about this. Okay, you probably know. A lot of people know. I have my own personal channel now that I started. I do a few blogs a day. If you don't know about it, you should check it out. Okay, video blogs. And uh, I'm, I'm back and forth communicating with everybody who's, anybody who messages me gets an answer on that, like 100%. If you don't get one, by the way, it's because I, I missed it somehow, because there's a lot that are coming in. Um, but one thing that I keep getting is something that even came up this morning, like how do you keep your passion, or how do you keep going, and blah, 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 blah. So I was thinking about it this morning. And last night I had a very interesting uh, experience. When I was going to go to sleep last night, at some point, I started to get very sad, like really sad, and I was like, fuck, man, it was like this overwhelming sense of sadness, and I've had it in my life before, I've had it in my life many times where suddenly I'm just gripped with like, I don't know, like the, it feels like the pain of the world is on me or some shit, and I'm just like, oh my fucking god, I hadn't felt that in a while, so it started to come more and more and more, and I, I didn't want to run away from it, I just wanted to kind of feel it out and see what it was like, because... I'm older, more mature than when I had it when I was younger, right? So as this kept, it kept coming, kept coming, kept coming, I had one choice, one solution. And for me, it was to try to, well, let me tell you what the pain was about. The pain was about people that I love dying, like my family, my girlfriend, people that are closest to me. This has been a, this has been a thought for me growing up my entire life. I've literally been a child, and I would think about death. I think about death every second of my day almost, right? But sometimes it just really grips me. I kind of like push it in the back of my mind, but sometimes like last night it just takes over. So last night I had to re, um, reinstate my personal vow to myself uh, at around, what was like 1.45 a.m. or something. And once again I decided last night that no matter what, no matter how much energy it takes, no matter what I got to go through, no matter what it takes, I have to somehow, before I die, figure out a fucking way to handle this situation of, we're all going to die, I know that, okay, I'm not, that's, not, that's not the problem. The problem is the amount of suffering that comes from it. It seems like all these wise men came before and, you know, they, we can go to Mars, but we can't figure out how to fucking deal with someone's death, you know, like... Think about the, the person closest to you, right? Someone you maybe are so attached to. If you don't have anybody, uh, really, God bless you. Congratulations, okay? But if you do, if you do, then at some point you have to confront the fact of them dying maybe before you. And what that's going to be. Are you going to want to eat? Someone's going to be, afterwards, they're going to come to you and say, let's go, let's go have some burgers. Or, come on, man, right? Let's get a drink. No. You want to fuck? A girl tries to fuck you? No. Let's go to work. It's like everything shuts down. And then slowly, I've seen it, I've seen people die, you know what I mean, right? Slowly starts to pick up. So, last night I was like, fuck this, man. Fuck this. I'm here, I'm alive. And if no one's been able to handle it yet, well, I still gotta handle it because I'm suffering at the end of the night for this thing. So, at that moment, I realized something else. I realized that I've been doing that my entire life. You know everything, that game that's going on right now, or the martial arts? or everything that I have in my life, has had behind it this one common denominator. It's had the common denominator of making sure the people that I love the most are safe. Like that was underneath everything, okay? I realized I couldn't deal with, with you know, making them immortal or anything. I don't have the answer to that. But I figured while I'm alive, Two things are going to happen. One, I'm going to provide a certain level of experience for the people around me that's reserved for the elite of the planet. The people that have all the money, all the access to the world, 
I never wanted, you know, my parents or my friends, myself I could really give a shit, honestly, okay? But my parents or my friends, uh, my girlfriend, I never wanted them to kind of sit back and be like, ooh, they're so lucky, and just kind of be like, well, that's us, you know, we're, we're just, we're destined to be this shitty fucking cards we have. I didn't want that. And number two, I never wanted anyone around me to feel bullied or threatened. That was an issue, that's like a big issue for me. All right. So the energy and everything that I do, when you cut through to the lowest, 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 lowest layer, the lowest point is I'm trying to handle a problem or two. One, I'm trying to handle the, the pain of suffering that's going to come when the people around me that I care the most for die. I really don't know how to handle it. There's a few people that when I run my head, I don't know. I don't know how it's going to be after that. So while they're alive, i got to fucking figure some shit out. Two, while they're here, I want to make sure that the experience that they have, so when it's game over, we could look back and go, well, they fucking lived. It wasn't like, well, that was a tough life and, you know, poor them. They had like 60, 80, 10, you know, whatever fucking years of shit. I don't want that. Not while I'm here. Now, when I think about that, eating, sleeping, uh, tired, not tired, fear, no, f like all that is nothing compared to what I just said. Because what I just said drives me and it grips at my, it grips at my fucking soul. It's, it's hard, it's hard to describe the feeling. But I think that every human being has something like that. It's that deep core motivation. So outside the girls, outside the money, outside the fame, outside whatever acknowledgement that you like, when all that shit calms down and it's 1.45 a.m. and you're laying there and you can't sleep suddenly like last night and then the weight of the world is on your chest, on your back, and you're going, what the fuck is this? Because at that moment, no pussy's going to handle it, no money's going to handle it. No, there's a problem there. There's a problem that's been hidden. Okay, that has to be your driving force. And you got to do a little bit more of a search. Because if you have a problem approaching a woman, and I know a lot of people here don't actually, the ones live. Uh, but you know, we got other people online too. If you have a problem approaching a girl, that's very tiny compared to your core, core motivation. You have to find that thing, that thing that makes you overcome any obstacle. Okay? Now in my case, I kept working it out like this. I was like, okay, If it wasn't for these people around me that I was thinking about last night, if it was just me, would it matter? And honestly, it wouldn't matter. I mean, that's the weird part. We, you, you might have to look for yourself to see. It's like, I think if I was alone, I'd be just fine. Like, whatever. Big fucking deal. I would deal with loneliness, right? And I would fucking take loneliness any day over the fucking bullshit I'm dealing with when it comes to this, this feeling. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, loneliness, and you live a lonely life. Fuck bitches and get money or whatever, and just be lonely. Okay, that's your problem. Or... Be surrounded by something that you don't want to lose no matter what. And know you're going to lose it and there's no way out of it and get ready for that shit. I'm like, fuck man, I kind of wish I was lonely. You know, that's what I said in the beginning. Like, if you don't have anybody in your life, God bless you, man. I wish I had your life. I really do. Okay? But it is what it is. The point of this the talk is I am very in touch with that core motivation of mine. So, everything I'm doing is to handle that. Everything I'm doing is to handle that. No one's going to come save me. I know that shit. I just know that. Right? I know that from deep in my soul. I have to fucking handle it. There's been too many people before me that didn't handle it. So maybe I won't even have enough time. But I'm going to do what I got to do while I can. Maybe then my little research will help the next dude around afterwards. Who the fuck knows? I don't fucking know. Because what I'm doing is also on the backs of all the wise men that came before me too. I study them. And yes, it pushes me forward. I'm inspired by them. Right? So now I want you to think about whatever goals you have, right? Because when I started to think like that, the goal of becoming a multi-millionaire was very easy suddenly. Now check this out. It wasn't less important. It was just very easy. It went from being a goal like that to a goal like this. I was like, well, I can do that. But what I need to do is I need to fucking handle this debt thing. Like a million, that's easy. You just got to work and put out the product and make sure it's charged. But okay, now, but how do I? And then it, get, it went in perspective. It's like the guy who's trying to approach, 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 and then you take him and you throw him in a, in a, what's hypnotic guy we're talking about this? Yeah. In a whorehouse. And you buy six prostitutes for him. Simultaneously. 
and he's been having a hard time approaching and saying hi to girls, right? And you go, here's six hot women who are going to fuck you. Go. Imagine him in that situation. Sensory overload. What the fuck? Scared? No. Maybe like he'll come up with stuff like, hold on, wait. No, bro. Shut the door. Boom. <laughs> Lock it. And he's sitting there and there's six women and they start stripping down. And imagine the shift in the guy's experience. He goes from, how do I say hi to a girl to... Okay, I can't, there's no way out. There's six hot girls who are going to fuck me right now. And the only way out is i got to fuck six girls. It's a complete reality shift. Okay? So it goes from whatever goal you have, which is very on the surface if you look at it. It's on the surface. It really is. Whatever that is. You know, you want to be a player. You want to be a successful businessman. You want to be... I see girls, you know, um, a couple of girls messaged me the last couple of days. Like, one of them, uh, her boyfriend was caught cheating, you know some other girl or whatever, okay, you know, like, oh, welcome, welcome to men, we're going to cheat, okay, we got to rename that word cheating, we're going to hook up with other girls, there you go, <laughs> okay, that's the way it is, so, uh, I want you to, that, that, although it looks like she's handling that, and that is an issue, and although it looks like maybe we're trying to handle our business, no, there's, that is on top of a bunch of other shit, some core, like, some core values. Okay, now, I'm, I'm aware of this just because of my new research, which I'm going to tell you tomorrow on seduction, how you do this. Because let me tell you, that woman you're dealing with, she has something right there, too. We have to be able to touch that. Boom. Because I tell you, if somebody came up to me right now, I swear, and said, will you give up every single thing you have, every single person you know, every, like everything, and your promise is you will have to live in the gutter, from now until your death. But, I will give you the solution to that problem. Like, like if I knew for, like, pretend it was like some God came down and it was for real. I would take that, I would take that. Like, with, without, without question, if I knew for sure the answer to that question I've been looking for is there, I would give up everything, everything I have for that. Because that's the most important thing to me. I was like, fuck man. Are you kidding me? That all this would go away if I just had the... So maybe I'm just trying to handle that. And I am trying to handle that. I realize it. And in my life, I push it away, push it away, and I do this, do that, and help people, and that's kind of like makes it easier. But it's, sometimes it is what it is. Boom. It comes. You know what I mean? And then you're gripped again. But this feeling has been with me since childhood. So then I started to think about other people. I said, motivation has probably been with you since childhood. It's normally... This is the clue. This is the clue. And I'm going to give you the clue to seduction. But tomorrow, this is the clue for seduction. It's always a problem that you have to look at. It's a problem you have to look at. There's a problem trying to be solved. That one. In fact, if you want to sell to a customer, you have to find their problem. Like I said, I would give everything I have for the solution if someone had it. Everything I have, right? So then I looked at every book I ever read, every video I ever watched, Every, every tattoo I ever got was a symbol of handling these one of two things. One, it was either a very aggressive symbol and something that tuned me into some kind of vibration that made me more and more of a threat to anybody who wanted to harm my family or friends. Look at me and everything I've done. Or two, it was a tattoo or a book or a communication that had to do with them understanding a deeper truth of life so that life wouldn't be such a fucking burden at some point. And that is really the only two things I've ever done in my entire life from childhood. But it's branched out into what it looks like a martial arts academy, a game, and women, and all that other shit. But you go back down, I'm, I'm, trying, I'm going, what's the seed? What's the fucking seed that was under the soil? Because that's the one. I, I see it. Every once in a while, I'm aware of it. Normally, I would run from it. Like, if that would have happened to me last night, if it would have happened some months ago, I would have smoked weed. Or maybe drank a lot at that point and then would have fallen asleep. And that would have been the end. But that's not I didn't. I want to stay up and see what the fuck happened. So here are the insights from it. So now think with that for a second. How driven are you? How driven are you? You see, we like symbols, right? Like you're wearing a symbol of a lion. Symbol of a lion. Like what? Why? Why the lion? What problem? Get this. What problem would that lion handle? if you had his abilities, boom, and now we're getting closer to that truth. You see what I'm saying, right? We like superheroes, or, or we admire certain people, but ask yourself,